Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to the model railway news for November. And as the weather starts to get a bit chilly, I hope you're all looking forward to spending some quality indoor time working on your various modelling projects. I know I am. But today's video is all about getting you all of the latest news, so let's get started with that. Before I do, I just want to mention the new shirt that I've got on here because I've been working with the great artists at Bonfire to come up with a brand new Bullman design. And these are available now. I've got them as shirts and also as jumpers and hoodies. The links for these are down in the description. And the first batch of these is going out on the 5th of December. So if you order before then, you should get yours before Christmas. So they might make an ideal gift for someone you know, provided they like Sam's Trains. If they don't like Sam's Trains, then it would make a bad gift, which I guess could also have its uses. Anyway, on to the news, because Backman have made their winter 2022 announcements. And as is quite usually the case, at least for 00 scale modelers, there's not an awful lot to see here that is brand new. But you may be interested in some of the returning models, so let's take a look at some of those. The first one that caught my eye would be the DCC Sound Fitted Western Pullman, which is a six car set priced at £635 to £749, the latter price being the RRP. Quite a cool pack though, I suppose. They've also brought back the Class 9F. You've got DCC ready versions of the model and also DCC Sound Fitted. The DCC ready ones cost £229.95 RRP which makes it around £23 cheaper than Hornby's 9F offering, but having reviewed a 9F model from Backman myself, in my opinion, theirs is by far the poorer model. They have quite a bit less detail, the quality is worse as well, the mechanisms are quite a way behind Hornby's, and none of the new examples seem to have the intricate lined BR green livery, and instead they seem to be going for the simpler plain black or the plain black with weathering. Now, to be fair, it's not clear whether Backman have upgraded their latest version of the 9F. I've not read anything to suggest that they have, but certainly at those new prices, I think they should have done in order to make them worth the money. They've also brought back the War Department Austerity 280s, including one in the khaki green. This has an RRP of £199.95, so it's more reasonable than the 9F and you can pick these up at retailers that offer discounts for £170 approximately. I can see this one being popular, I don't remember seeing the WD in the green before, so that's cool. They've also brought back some EFE rail models. Hooray! Yeah, it's the LSWR coach packs with an astonishing RRP of £224.95 for three, with a typical retailer price of around £191, which makes these coaches weigh over £60 each, even though you're buying in bulk because they are in packs of three. I don't know what these coaches are like, I've never tried any, and looking at those prices, I don't think I ever will either. But if you do, please let me know what they are like. Are they absolutely outstanding? I should certainly hope so. The Fairburn tank is also making a return with an RRP of £184.95 or £160 approximately at the retailers. Yep, those are decent models, quite nice to see those back in the range. They've also got the V1 tank returning in quite a nice LNER livery as well. And this one seems even more reasonable at £169.95, which is a very nice RRP, I think with a retailer price being approximately £145, although do bear in mind the bodies on these locos, as far as I know, are quite old and outdated, hence why these are a little bit cheaper. Look to your preferred Backman stockist for more items in the winter 2022 range. There are quite a lot of models to see, so I would urge you to check it out if you're interested. Up next, Hornby have showed some progress on their LNER coronation coaches. They've revealed some very realistic looking renders which do a great job of showing the detail, uh, the interior detail as well. Look at the seats inside that observation car. Wow. And they've also stated that all of the models will be coming with lights and not just the battery powered lights either. They're going to have axle bearings to pick up power from the track. So that's a, a good quality feature at last, isn't it? So that, I guess, helps to justify the price. They've also said that these are going to come with magnetic couplings presumably still NEM based ones so that you can customize, but that should make the couplings a little bit more subtle and a little bit easier to use as well. 
Now, even though these are just digital renders, they're not physical models, they do have some samples that they showed off at the Great Electric Train Show, although it's not entirely clear whether these are just 3D prints or actual shots from the tooling. I don't think they specified on the Engine Shed blog where I found this, but head over there and read about it if you're interested. Also featured on the blog is something that I'd previously missed. It is Hornby's 30 pounds Christmas tree carrier. Now, they call it a Christmas tree carrier, but I can't see anything on it that remotely resembles a Christmas tree. Now, just to be clear, this is a Christmas tree. Can you see what it looks like? So it's got like a, a trunk on it, and then shortly above the trunk, there are branches which start wide and then they taper upwards towards the top. A Christmas tree. Now let's take another look at Hornby's Christmas tree. Well, yeah, I just I can't see anything on here that looks like a Christmas tree. It's got a trunk at both ends, and it remains uniform right across the length of it. That's right, it's a mutated Martian Christmas tree. And you know what that means, Hornby? You made a sale. 30 quid? Yes, please. Things have gone relatively quiet on the TT front. I've not seen any models released yet, for instance, but there has been a bit of an update on the upcoming 08 Shunter because they've revealed the first engineering prototype of the Loco. And I think when you consider what scale this is, when you consider that this is so much smaller than 00, I think the level of detail on this looks really impressive. I've also learned that the TT Pacifics are going to have traction tires on them. Now, I know that's a feature that we hate in double O scale. Well, maybe you don't. I certainly don't like it very much. But in N scale, it is something that we see quite often because obviously those models are small and light, so they struggle more with traction and therefore traction tires are necessary. So as a scale between double O and N scale, are traction tyres going to be the norm in TT? Well, we'll have to find out, but do let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this. Will that put you off? Do you not mind? Do let me know. Up next, it's been quite a troubled month for Rapido trains, because just before they were due to release their dynamometer cars, this happened. I think it was the delivery company that did this, but either way, not great when you're dealing with very fragile models. And this, of course, delayed the release of the dynamometers while the models were checked. On the plus side, though, isn't it great that Rapido actually showed this clip? They let their customers know that this had happened and they explained why the delay had happened. It makes you wonder how often this sort of thing happens that we don't hear about. And that would really explain all of the damaged models that we receive from time to time. So, yeah, it's not great, obviously, but it doesn't seem to be Rapido's fault particularly. And you have to praise them for being open about what happened. So overall, I think they've made a positive out of this. Now that they're out, though, a fault has been discovered in the lighting circuitry, which causes overheating, burning out and potential damage to the models themselves. In light of this, Rapido have issued a complete recall for the latest batch of dynamometers, and if you've bought one, I would strongly advise taking them up on their offer for repairs. They are sending out free postage labels, so you don't have to pay for postage, and you can fill out a very simple form at rapidotrains.co.uk forward slash recall. Nevertheless, the model I reviewed was absolutely amazing, aside from the lighting issues. You can check out the review there if you're interested. On my example, the lights didn't burn out or anything, but they were very dim, and the magic wand tool that you use to switch on and off the lights just didn't work at all. So there is some sort of fault going on there, and I am sending mine back. There's also a load of new wagons in stock from Rapido. You have their SECR two plank ballast wagons, which cost £32.95 RRP, or a few pounds cheaper at around £28 at the retailers. They've also got some 10 ton SECR goods vans, which are available at the same price, and all of which look absolutely marvellous, as well they should for around £30. They've also revealed a production sample of their new VIX ferry vans, which also look absolutely great. If you're interested in any of this stuff, then I've popped affiliate links down in the description for you. Up next, a bit of an update from Planet Industrials, who have just successfully released their first ready-to-run locomotive. You can see my review of it here. It was, of course, the Care Stewart Victory, and overall, it was a really decent model for the money. And looking at comments from you guys, you were massive fans as well. 
glowing, glowing comments from everybody on that loco, which suggests what a roaring success this model has been. The mechanism and performance of this loco were absolutely out of this world, have to be seen to be believed. Again, check out the review if you like. The level of detail for me and also the quality to an extent left a little bit to be desired, but we still see much worse from much more experienced manufacturers quite a lot of the time. So as PI's first loco, I don't think it's too bad at all. Head over to light railway stores if you'd like to try one. Up next, Hattons have revealed some new additions to their Genesis coach range. This time it is some Irish CIE liveries. This includes the early dark green livery, the slightly later light green, which was seen from the late 50s to the mid 60s, and then the black and tan livery that we also saw on the Murphy Class 121. Quite tempted by that one, by the way. These coaches are all unlit now for £33 each, yet you still have an option to buy a lighting kit which you can fit yourself and apparently that's very easy to do. Check out the links, affiliate ones, in the description if you're interested. Hattons are also having a major Christmas sale at the moment, which I thought was well worth a mention. This includes the Hornby Lord Nelson, which is down to 150 quid, the Oxford Adam Radial Tank, which is down to 140 quid, and also there's some ludicrous reductions on the Hattons O-Gage Pacifics, which used to cost 750 quid, and they're now down to 299 on the A3, for instance. You've got Hornby Class 71s down to £89 and lots of O-gauge diesel reductions as well. Now with the skyrocketing prices that we've been seeing in model railways recently, sales like this play a huge part in being able to afford the hobby. So if you know of any similar sales going on, please do let me know. Comment down below. If you think I should give them a mention, I will do next time because like I say, I think they're quite important. Finally then, Locomotion Models and Rails have announced their latest exclusive locomotive. This time it's manufactured by Helgen and it is the ES1 Electric Shunter No. 1. This was a very early electric locomotive which came about following the early electrification of parts of the NER in 1903 and 1904. There are five models announced in this new range and it seems as though the usual exclusive markup is in full flow because the price is a whopping £220 each. The liveries include the NER version in a fetching BR green, very light minty looking green, a BR black which is very handsome and also LNER black. In describing this model, they've used their favourite phrase, museum quality detail, which of course means nothing, or at least I don't know what it means. They do have more specific information such as LED cab light and headlights, five pole motor, which is a good quality feature, that sounds great. It's got a fine scale sprung pantograph apparently and also sprung buffers. So pretty much what you'd expect for a new model. In terms of what the models are actually like, we're just going to have to wait and see. Will they justify the massive price tag? I guess we will find out. For now though, that is all the news I have for you for today or for this month. If there's anything that I didn't talk about that you think does deserve a mention, please again comment it down below and I will consider it for December. For now though, have a great month, let me know what you think of all of this and I'll catch you very very soon. Alright, cheers folks, take care.